Metropolitan police officers are four times more likely to use force against black people compared with the white population, according to new figures. Scotland Yard said that the causes of disproportionality are not straightforward. But it comes as a serving officer has told BBC London that there is racism in the ranks. A warning from the start of Tara Welsh's report, there will be some footage that you may find upsetting. Finsbury Park earlier this month. A police officer appears to kneel on a man's neck. The Met says an officer has been suspended and the Independent Office for Police Conduct is investigating. It's one of a number of incidents that's raised concerns over racial bias in policing. For Nathan, it's brought up the trauma of his own experience. In the space of three or four minutes, there's about six more officers. All of them has got my face on the ground. The officer who put the handcuff on me was using his uh, right knee like that on top of my chest. They were throwing me like that to the van and my forehead here hit the side of the door and I pass out. Nathan was pulled over on suspicion of taxi touting whilst working as a minicab driver at Heathrow in 2013. His company confirmed he was there to pick up a fare, but he was still arrested. When my eyes got open, my face was on the floor of a cell Half of my shirt is covered with blood and my breathing was cutting off. I didn't think I was going to survive. Magistrates dismissed all charges against Nathan. He received compensation and made a complaint, but officers were cleared of any wrongdoing. According to the Met's own figures, black people are nearly four times more likely to have force used on them than white people. We've spoken to former and serving officers concerned about bias in the ranks. One has spoken out. We've disguised their identity. They're more aggressive with us because they find us scary. They're heavy handed, particularly with black men. If a black person is upset saying it's hurting, they say he looks fine to me. They can't see bruises. If you've never seen black skin, you don't see the bruising. They can't see them going red. And if there's any allegations of racism, a direct or indirect, those are investigated and if officers are found to have breached standards of professional, sta uh, professional standards in terms of their attitudes towards individual groups, then they're dealt with. Following the death of George Floyd in America, thousands marched in London about police force used here. Black people are twice as likely to die in custody after force has been used. Just over three years ago, Rashan Charles was running away from a police officer and ran into a shop in Hackney. CCTV footage shows him placing something in his mouth. He's restrained by an officer who's assisted by a passerby. I've watched the video so many times now that it's playing in my mind as I speak to you. I don't need to view it again. Uh, I've seen members of my family who are broken people because of what's happened. Rashan's great-uncle Rod is a former police chief inspector who's trained officers about how to detain and restrain suspects. I stand firmly with any officer who has to use lethal force or the highest levels of force when it's appropriate. They have my backing and they should have yours. But when you're talking about a scene that I watch where there isn't a clear and obvious threat to the officer, certainly no threat to bystanders. The levels of resistance from Rashan, if I'm generous, the levels of resistance are negligible. They really are zero. Yet you watch the use of force continue to climb. And he died, and I say, I know it was needless. But an inquest into Rashan's death found the officer's use of force was justified and that he died as a consequence of a package he has inserted in his mouth blocking his airway. The Independent Office for Police Conduct found the officer's actions were below standards, but not deliberate and did not amount to misconduct. Rashan is one of hundreds of people to have lost their lives in police custody, but no officer has ever been found guilty of murder or manslaughter.
For families that have lost a loved one in police custody or those that have been injured following the use of force, it's often the sense of police impunity that's most difficult. Not only are officers almost never convicted, many don't even face any internal disciplinary action. As we've seen through the various cases uh, over the years, it isn't the actions of an individual that can be attributed to the death. There's a, a range of small things that, through a, a coming together of those small things, end up in a tragedy. It's been several weeks since the outpouring of feeling in the capital, but it hasn't gone away, and it won't until black lives stop being lost disproportionately.